All right, we'll go ahead and call the order the Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission meeting for um, Tuesday, February 20th. March. March oh, March. What's okay. March already? March 20th. March 20th. Sorry. Birthday clock PM. Last a day, a whole month. So I'll go ahead with the roll call. Thank you. Jason Steenblock. Here. Terry Steenblock. Here. Jack McKenzie. Here. Jackie McNamara. Here. Doug Ramseth. Here. Perfect. So we have the agenda in front of us. Do we have um, any changes to the agenda or approval for the agenda? I'll make a motion. We approve the agenda with the requested um, change you know, under the regular agenda of switching Belts Park and Fenway. I'll second that. So we have a motion to make the switch from B to C on the agenda and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next on the agenda is the open forum. Do we have anybody that wants to speak today as part of the open forum? We do not have anyone to speak for the open forum. All right. So then next on the agenda, we have the approval of the meeting minutes of the February 20th meeting. Um, do we have... A um, motion for approval of the meeting minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as written. I'll second. So we have a motion and a second to approve the meeting minutes from Tuesday, February 20th. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, so now we have the Fenway Advisory Board appointment. Jamie, did you want to give us a little update on that? Yep, thank you. So Chair and members of the Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission, um, included in your packet this evening is some information on our Fenway Advisory Board um, <coughs> committee. And it's a committee that we meet quarterly along with two members of the City Council, the Forest Lake Area Athletic Association and a couple of their representatives as well. Per our Fenway Management Agreement, we are required to have two members of the Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission represented on this advisory board. Some of the roles and responsibilities really focuses more on um, some of the current updates taking place out at Fenway Park, planning for the future, seeing how the programming is going, what events are taking place. It's an advisory board. It's, a, it's an opportunity to address any issues or concerns as well. Um, currently, Jack McKenzie is a representative from the Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission on the Fenway Advisory Board. Um, however, we do need one more representative, and I'm looking for to fill that vacancy this evening. With that, if there's anyone interested or somebody that would be um, potentially nominated to serve on this committee, we would be looking to appoint a member this evening. With that, if you have any questions, otherwise looking for one member to be added to our Fenway Advisory Board Committee. So Jamie, the, the time commitment, it's a quarterly meeting and then um, additional meetings as needed or? Yeah, the group has generally met probably actually only about three times a year, being that activities at Fenway are pretty seasonal. We're looking to have f four meetings this year. And then I know Jack um, has been played a big role in some of the maintenance improvements out at Fenway, identifying some of the issues. So anytime there are Fenway-related items, just serving as more of a representative on behalf of the Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission. Um, so working alongside with myself and Jack on some of the Fenway components right now. Up and coming will be looking at um, amend amendments to our Fenway management agreement that we have with FLAW. That expires December 31st of 2019. However, with some of the maintenance changes that are going into effect this year, um, we will need to look at some minor updates of some changes and responsibilities in our Fenway management agreement. So that would be an example of maybe a separate meeting where we met um, specific for that, just to address that topic. Do you anticipate that there'll be even maybe several more just because of the change in management of the fields and like will 
this I would think that this committee would be the oversight committee kind of to make sure that what's supposed to be being done is being done and that kind of thing. Am I right or not? Um, that's a great question. The advisory committee is still anticipated to meet quarterly at this time. Another subcommittee that will be developed with city staff and flaw and our, the maintenance provider is more of an oversight group. So there'll be a little bit more of a monthly touch base group, which would be different than what we're seeking here. Okay. This is more, I would say, more of your long-term planning, capital improvement planning, um, a little bit on how is the programming going and some, some information there, but really a lot of the improvements and planning is a big part of this. But again, just um, and the Fenway Management Agreement, I would I would say is a big part of this hmm. as well. Okay. Jack, do you have any comments as being a member of it, or? I'm excited to participate once again. <laughs> Perfect. It's motivating for somebody else to join. <laughs> so, what skill set or what what knowledge Interest. would be ideal? Interest. Okay. Yeah, somebody who can look at the, the whole picture, not just uh, the turf growing today, but also the potential for lighting up the fields in the long run. We've done an awful lot on that property, from pickleball to enhanced <coughs> maintenance of, of field five. And I think bringing the new management company in with Jeremy <coughs> Walker is just going to be a big turnaround, and a lot of excitement will be generated from that. Cool. And that field is going to be fantastic. Here's a, I can kind of pull up a little, this is a staff memo from a meeting at the end of last year as we were going through some of the planning for the changes out at Fenway with the maintenance. So I'll pull this up here for you guys in just a second. Um, so this will pop up on your screen here. So this was with a new agreement with FLAW and, and having a different maintenance provider at Fenway. So you'll see here there's different levels of communication. So level three is the Fenway Advisory Board. Again, it outlines who would be included in that and then um, assist and advise on the overall operation and maintenance of the athletic complex by FLAW and the overall scheduling and use of the park. So FLAW will be working with a new maintenance provider and overseeing their, working with them on that just to make sure that things are maintained properly. Um, so if there would be any issues that arose from that, that, that would go to this Fenway Advisory Board Committee. So for example, if there's any issues or questions on the height of the grass or other maintenance concerns or how the relationship's working together, this would go to the Advisory Board. Is this working well? Is this something we want to continue? Where does the city need to be involved a little bit more um, is just an example of how that advisory committee would function if we would have any situations that came up along those lines. Whereas the monthly maintenance committee is more of how are the warning tracks looking, you know, is this, are the, is everything getting, is the grass clippings getting blown off, blown off is more of those like tasks items um, would be managed more frequently through a different group. And then city staff will just have, you know, more frequent communication with flaw and the maintenance provider more on a weekly basis just to see if there's any immediate issues that we need to address. <clears throat> so hopefully that kind of helps clarify the, the different levels and what you'd be responsible for contributing to. Um, I'd like to um, be part of that Fenway Advisory Board. Okay. Is there any, anyone else interested as well? Just want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to be considered. Okay. So with that, we would need like a motion to. Does anybody want to make a motion? Do you want a motion? Yes. I make a motion to nominate Jason Steenblock as the on the Fenway Advisory Board. Do we have a second? I'll second that. So we have a motion for Jason Steenblock on the Fenway Advisory Board and a second. Uh, all in. Oh wait. Yeah. Any um, questions? Favor. Oh, yeah. I'll, you can take it to a vote if there's no discussion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Great. All right. 
So next on the agenda is the Belts Park presentation. <clears throat> All right, so this evening we have representatives from the Forest Lake High School here as a part of the Politi Political Action Committee, also known as the PAC, I believe is the acronym for that. Um, and they are here, um, included in your packet is the presentation that they have provided to the City of Forest Lake that they will share with you shortly here. Um, they are going to remind us and um, share some great ideas that they have for our future belts redevelopment consideration. So with that, I can pull this up on the computer here for you guys in just a minute. And if you want to head up to the podium, um, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves and present. It'll be up on the monitor in just a minute. Um, and as they're getting ready, um, this is you know an informational piece tonight for any questions or comments um, that you may have when they complete their presentation. So just be one minute here. Welcome. If you want to introduce yourself while we're waiting for Jamie, that'd be great. All right. Thank you for uh, having us here tonight. I'm Reed Nelson. This is Tristan Brunfeld, and that's Matthew Strupp. Um, we are members of the Force Lake Student Pack, as you just heard. Um, our goal is to organize student opinion and promote involvement in the community and city government. Um, our demographic, uh, as students, represents a significant stakeholder in the community, and we hope to learn better uh, how to make our needs and opinions known to the city. Uh, one focus of ours has been to generate more local activity options for our age group. Uh, as of right now, a large portion of the students gather outside of the city to, uh, for those kind of opportunities. Belts Park is in line for renovations, and we, we would like to join the conversation about what might be created there. Uh, we think it could become a great gathering area for our age group and um, if, if it can be customized to draw us in. And so we've got the um, concept to s get the conversation started on this. Yeah, so we've actually created a graphic of our um, concept and it should be on your screens. Um, and so I'll go through it item by item. Um, so. Item A on the concept would be repairing the surface of the tennis courts present at the park and um, striping it to include pickleball, which we know was a um, suggestion put forward by other groups who wanted to see that there. We also, in section B, wanted to add court wall panels for um, sort of a half court racquetball or handball and other uh, uses like lacrosse practice for practicing throwing, because we know that those are activities that people at our school like to do and they would like to be able to do in Forest Lake. Um, for B and C, we'd also like to surface the area and reestablish a basketball court there so that people can um, play there. Um, maintain or improve the existing children's play playground because it's not just for our age group, it's also for younger children in this park. Um, and then improve and expand the volleyball court. Uh, more courts with improved surfaces would bring more competitive um, volleyball play there, which was a, an interest that some of the students at our school have. Um, and then in the F, um, through G area, we would like to introduce a skate park on that corner. Um, we think that that is something that uh, a lot of people have to go to Wyoming to do, and we think that that corner is especially good because there's a street light right there. It's on the corner of two streets, so it's a place where um, that's visible to people from the outside. So it's a place that can be easily supervised, as well as you know bringing people to this area um, for skating. Um, or we had an idea of sort of like a, um, a challenge course sort of thing um, where you would be able to do different sorts of events. With, um, we, we've seen some ideas of that from other existing parks and other places. Um, and then, so in, sec in uh, item H, um, this would be the uh, containment area for a winter skating rink like already exists but possibly um, improved. For um, item I, improve the existing softball fields. We don't want to um, make too many changes with that. Um, 
Item J would be a um, tetherball circle on the grass. Um, that could be in a different location in the park, but we think tetherball is something that we'd like to see here. Um, and then part K is sort of the thing that ties together our vision for this park. Um, it would be a multi-use gathering area. Um, we would want a covered platform to be used for sort of um, presentations to an audience or for just sheltered meetings. Um, I know uh, having Wi-Fi and tables in this area had been a point of contention when we previously brought forward this idea last year, um, or a, a version of this idea last year. But we actually we think that that is a very important part of it because it's what will bring students there to do homework, to um, gather and collaborate on things. And we think without that, it wouldn't have the same draw. Um, and then this would also allow us to hide the portable toilets in the place and create a friendly outside image. And then um, part L, just new park entry mo on monuments near the entrance of the park. Um, and then I will hand it off to Tristan. All right, thank you. Um, oh, sorry. So obviously you can see that already just in the concepts that we brought up to lots of different students, there's already tons of involvement with lots of ideas for what people would want. Now of course we understand that there is an approval process and funding limits to consider before any final uses are determined and we'd like to stay active as the um, committee in those discussions. Another thing that we're really excited about is that um, students can be major players in many parts of the park enhancements. We're instructed in architectural design and construction and could possibly focus some class efforts towards parts uh, of the project, which would be really cool. Uh, we represent a volunteer workforce that could take care of some of that needed manual labor. The Student Social Network expands rapidly when needed to promote outcomes or reach for possible funding, so think of us as partners ready to help. Thank you for your attention. We'd be happy to answer any questions you may have or take any direction you may offer. Thank you. Nice job. I have a question. What happened last year? Last year we brought forward a, a similar idea and we're just reintroducing some of the same ideas and also refined versions based on more input we've received. Okay. I like the idea of the skate park there on the corner. Um, problems were with the last one is that it was tucked away by the trail and uh, suffered vandalism and things. So that's, that's a good spot for it. Yeah, and, and of course, that's one of the much bigger items that would be a really major change that a lot of students would be really excited about. Mm -hmm. Is that in lieu of a, the uh, small ball field that's there? Yeah, so we'd be replacing one of the existing softball fields but leaving the other one intact. So is the, do you like the skate park or the challenge course? course the, what, what do you guys like? Um, I think that they're both good ideas. I think the skate park um, is obviously a specific thing that people were bringing up. We also found the challenge course idea interesting. I think um, I would be more inclined toward the skate park because that's a more specific suggestion that we had heard about. With regards to the tennis courts, aren't there plenty of tennis facilities at the high school that can be used by the community? <coughs> I think having some um, in the park in this location would also be um, more, uh, would also be a positive thing. And also the, many of the tennis courts at the school are of similar condition and quality to the ones there, and it would be really nice to even have much more improved ones at the park. Okay, because those, the existing courts have to be imploded completely and rebuilt. So just to clarify, A was both tennis courts, correct? Or was yes. one of those a pickleball? Mm. Item A is um, both tennis courts, and we, we know that pickleball has been suggested for that area, and we also, we realize that's not necessarily a student um, <coughs> demand, but we know that that's been brought up by other people. Is there, a, uh, is there enough parking on the street there, do you think? We do think that there's <laughs> enough parking on the street because it's, it's both sides of the park. Okay. So in regards to parking, I know working with city engineer, I know there's some conversations right now on potentially adding or being able to add some parking on South Shore Drive right there, some angled parking. Sorry about that. Um, so that is something that, you know, I know parking is obviously a, an area of, that we need to address if we are going to do improvements to the park or when we get there because then the volume of people attending the park is going to significantly increase so 
Right now it might be ample um, at best to have parking at the park. So it's just something that the Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission have been talking about. So I do know there is an opportunity with South Shore Drive potentially. So we can look into that further and explore potentially some other ideas on even more parking availability with improvements to the park. What age demographic do you see this primarily for? Well, we see the main things that we want to introduce as for like a high school demographic because those are the um, input that we've been hearing from at the high school, but also with improving the existing children's playground and possibly with that challenge course that, we were, that we're thinking about possibly in lieu of the skate park, that would be for a younger age demographic as well. I'm sorry, it's been a while since I've had a high schooler. What age range is that? Is that? That's um, 15 through 18. Okay, thank you. Do we have any scheduled games on that field? We don't, do we? We don't have any field reservations on that field. However, I know people are using those fields for your t-ball games primarily um, and pickup games, but nothing is scheduled through the city <coughs> as reservations, okay. but they are being utilized. Okay, good. Yeah, they're very active from my perspective. What about access to this park? Do we have enough trails on the street, sidewalks? I don't know that specifically. There, I know that. Okay. There's sidewalks on, there's a sidewalk going along the entirety of the two sides of it, I believe. Right? Okay. And then, um, and at one side of it meets up with um, uh, like uh, housing, I think. So that side is more, is just as like the fence, but I think at least two sides of it are entirely, have a full sidewalk along it. Okay. So it, there is some interconnectivity with the yeah. trail system, yeah. or do we need to improve the trail system throughout the city too? I think that would be something that I can chime in on. I know we've had some conversations recently with um, Forest Lake comp planning, parks and trails, and just long-term plans, but in the, in, in the immediate, how can we identify the trails within the community? And really, even some feedback last night, what do we define as a trail? Does it have to be meet all the certain requirements, certain widths, or can it be sidewalks? You know, can that constitute as a trail? So, a separate conversation is, you know, as we're looking at this development, is there a route we can identify to identify some loops in town of maybe you go down 11th Street and then you go on South Shore Drive up to Bayview Park and over to Bay Park? You know, what are some trail routes? within the community. I know, Jackie, we've talked a little bit about this as well, of putting that as a goal to identify a couple of trail loops within town. So I think that's a separate conversation of how we would be able to develop some connectivity between Belts Park, Bay Park, Bayview Park, was one of our side conversations um, regarding the trails within the community. So I think that's important as part of this, is how do we incorporate more of that so it's accessible even from Hardwood Creek Regional Trail, cross at 11th, um, you know, how do we get people there and promote it more so that it, you know, even from the high school, obviously that would be a big thing of identifying a safe route from the school over to the park, et cetera. So I think there's some opportunity there to look at what would be identified as a safe route and I connectivity. I think that location is very connectable to so many mm -hmm. things. I don't think it's very far away from, I should say it's so close to so many places. So I don't, I mean, I don't see that as an issue. I think the sidewalk system in that area of, of the city is, is pretty extensive and sidewalks are not limited to just walking. So, I mean, we can have, you know, your bikes can be on there and no motorized stuff, but um, you know, I think it's a very connectable place. Um, my real, my real only question is, I'm not. It looks like you have to walk through a lot of things to get to the picnic tables, unless you're parked on 11th. But there's not much parking there, so that's just one issue that I don't, you know. But I, but like where you have A, which is the tennis courts, that's where they are already, right? Yep. And we were just. So we're not like thinking to move anything, but that was just a comment I had, and it looks crowded to me, but. But I, I realize also that some of the things like the ice rink are seasonal. So it's not like there's going to be somebody there doing all that at one time. But it looks like a really good diagram. I think it's a really good plan. 
I guess I have another thought as well. I think the layout and the plan um, is very well thought through. Um, I think what might be a good action item or help continue being a part of this process would maybe be so finding some um, supporting with some data, maybe some surveying within your network of students of who would what would you rather see or you know use a skate park or the challenge course you know and inform them and provide some information there even like the feasibility of the tennis courts is that something that would I know that would open options for generally anybody in the public to use that and it's not just a um, high you know age 13 to 18 or 15 to 18 um, but maybe providing some data <laughs> Or do some, you know, might just be a nice action item for your group if you want to try to get a little more information on some of those items. Um, that was one thought I had. And another thought to consider is um, this is a big project and there's a lot of opportunity there. So one thing to maybe think about is there a way to identify this is a phased approach. So maybe we do A, B, C, or what items could we potentially, is it an all at once project or... Could there be, and if so, have that conversation about a phased approach so that it's something that we can plan for to complete over the course of a few years, potentially based on budget? I know this park has a lot of accessibility issues right now. Um, it's really not accessible, meaning there's a lot of compliance, um, ADA compliant items that need to be addressed. Um, anytime you're doing a new park improvement, you have to obviously meet those standards. So. There, like Jack mentioned, some of this could have to be imploded, and do we want that sloping hill there anymore? Do we take that out? I mean, those are some of the city engineer questions on what that will look like. I don't know. I mean, I know anything's possible. Do we want that to be there, or how do we envision some of the terrain and accessibility within the, the playground in the park area? So those were just some thoughts I had, and I don't know if commission members have any other thoughts or feedback on action items to give them some tasks to bring back at another meeting if there's any other thoughts on what well, as this is an important park to the city and as there's such great interest by the student pack <coughs> perhaps there could be a subcommittee formed or a couple individuals interested in this to work with the students and and i think I think you looked at the footprint and didn't envision a lot of opportunities there because this could be the next best park in the community where we sink a ton of money, not this year or next year, but we, we really look at a long-term budget. And I want you to just come up with crazy ideas, really. <clears throat> Get rid of the tennis courts. School's got them. We've got brand new pickleball courts. We need parking, not, not more than a stone's throw away. We've got another set of playground equipment at Bay Park. Is that Bay Park that, where the old liquor store used to be? Right? Yep, just down the road. Just, I mean, just down the road. Yep. So I, I like the vision, but I, I want to see more. And I think with a little bit of guidance from some interest on the commission here, just keep plugging away and working at this. Keep bringing it back so that we move forward. Yeah, that sounds like something we'll definitely be interested in doing. So I'd throw that out to Madam Commissioner. Do you have a, is that in a form of a motion or? Before you go into a motion, is there, are there individuals that would, I know this is up and coming on our priority list once we get through some other things here in the very near future, um, but I think this is gonna, these kind of plans do take some, t you know, quite a bit of time. And while the topic was introduced last year, you know, we're kind of, we're getting to that point of we really have to start digging into some plans and what is the vision of the park so are there I know I'll be spending time on this and if there are members on the commission interested um, I think that would be a good idea to form a subcommittee I would be interested in participating on that committee but then I'm committed out you're committed out yeah with Fenway in this. So. Then your committee. I'd be interested yeah. in doing that as well. Awesome. My mother wires. I know. Me too. I got a canoe. I don't know how much value I could add, but 
I would be interested in participating or as you go through the process. I'm, I'm really impressed with what you've put together thus far here and the effort that you've put into this. And um, I would be interested in assisting where I could. So do you want to make a little a subcommittee for this and work with me on getting some meetings and conversation going? And you know, I know I'll have a little more input. I know I can, sh and if I have a resource or somebody I can contact with, I can share, work through you on that. I think it might work best if you're willing to just connect through me. Uh, otherwise, we have uh, once a month at meetings at, on Friday at 7.15 a.m. at the high school. And that is sometimes you might be willing to participate in those times. Otherwise, if you connect through me, I'll make sure that we're available to discuss or give input. We take to heart what you've said so far in terms of how to maybe modify this or throw more thoughts at it, and maybe account pull it more of the top graphical issues and the ADA, which I don't think we spent much time talking about. Um, so we're, we're happy to refashion this. We have, these are our next executive committee for next year's school season as well, so we're not just kind of closing down and starting up with 300 people. Uh, so we'll have a little more connective issues going as school season stops and we start again. Uh, so if you would start that way, uh, as soon as you form a committee and you want to set up some times and opportunities for discussion, um, we'll report that way. And timing wise then, so obviously we have April and May, I know you have an early release this year from school. <coughs> So timing wise, is this something that you're looking to keep the conversation going, hopefully getting a meeting in April with our little subcommittee just to regroup on this and, cause I know then there's this, the few months of summer and then kind of pick it up again. So it might be nice if we can have a meeting or two yet in the next couple of months before school is out yeah, to get as far as we can in some of these initial conversations and see what legwork then we're tasked with maybe over the next few months on the engineering component and budget planning and things of that nature. Would that seem like a fair, something that you're interested in doing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think um, getting as much as we can this year and then as a pack, we'll try to um, get um, some more sophomores and even freshmen because they're coming to high school interested in this project and their, their ideas will definitely be helpful. Yeah. I think that, I mean, I'm interested in some data to support some of this too. So if that's something that you want to work with, just even if it's a simple survey or just getting some feedback on, you talk to however many students did a survey, you know, come up with some survey questions, it might just give you a good opportunity to do that. I think with Google surveys, we can absolutely do that. Yeah, there's Google surveys and surveymonkey.com, which works really well for quick and efficient surveys. So coming up with some questions, and if you want to send them over to me, if you want, just to make sure you're touching on some of the right things of just more feedback and community input's always important in projects of any nature, but especially the scope I think would be important to see help back some of the decisions that are being made in the planning process. So Jack, did you want to make a, oh, Jackie, go ahead. I just, I just have a comment um, because I think it's such a great plan and, I, and I'm not sure exactly where you guys started or, or you know, how far you're gonna go. Well, I hope we go all the way and get it, get it accomplish it. But when you put this plan together, did you <clears throat> have financial numbers? No, we didn't have any numbers. Of any kind to, to determine. Because I think along with your planning, I think that's a big component because maybe you can't do it all at one time. <clears throat> maybe we can do it in, like, like Jamie said, in stages. And so I think that financial component of how much each one of these specific sports entails financially is, could be you know, some decision making on what you do first and what you do second if that's the route we go. So I just thought I'd add that in that I think that's a big component. Yeah, I think that could actually be a next step for us. Okay, yeah, great. That, that's that's a much larger task than a lot of things we've done, and it obviously changes quite a bit as our concepts and ideas change as well, but it's absolutely that, it's something that we've been thinking of as we go through it, but it needs a lot more focus. Great. Good job. Discussion? Do you, you want to make a motion to a, a committee, or just? Can we have three? Are we having three? Can we have three? We could have three. It's not a quorum. Because we're still seven. We're still a seven-member okay. committee with currently five members. Okay. So three members on the subcommittee would be fine. Okay. If you want to make it official, if someone wants to make a motion and... I'd like to make a motion that we have a subcommittee to partner with the Forest Lake 
PAC, student PAC, that's what you call, to work on the Belts Park Long Range Project. Consisting of Jack McKenzie, yeah. Doug Ramseth, and Terry. Terry. Terry Steenblock. That's added to your motion? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'll second it. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very nice project. Very nice. Good. This Very is nice. pretty exciting stuff. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Good job, you guys. Thank you. Thanks for planting the seed last year. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so next on the agenda is the Lakeside Memorial Park Equipment Grant application. Okay, just a moment here. All right, so chair and members of the Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission, um, included in the agenda packet this evening, um, you, I provided some details and information, a summary regarding the Minnesota DNR Outdoor Recreation Grant opportunity. And this was also shared um, last with the city council at a workshop last night. So just to kind of summarize the staff memo and information here, the grant opportunity allows, there's a the whole list of eligible projects. One of them is improvements for playground safety and accessibility. The grant is in the amount of up to 50% of the total project costs where there is the match from the city. The city's match can be um, covered through labor, donations, and other funding sources as our match requirement. At our last meeting on February 20th, the Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission um, approved a motion to pursue this grant opportunity at Lakeside Memorial Park for inclusive playground. And it just gives a little summary here of what an inclusive playground entails. So through a lot of the research over the last few weeks and months as we've been talking about this, um, just really you can have a barrier-free or a fully inclusive playground. What that means is that anybody, whether wheelchair bound or not, can access everything on the playground. So it's completely accessible. You can also have playgrounds that have just some features that are inclusive. So an example would be like a sway fun where there's a ramp. So somebody who's wheelchair bound is able to enjoy that feature at the park, but they may not be able to fully access everything at the playground. Uh, I highlighted in the staff memo that the outdoor gr recreation grant um, gives priority to playgrounds designed with a high degree of safety and accessibility, and the facility should be designed to provide an integrated play setting for both children and parents or care providers of all abilities. So I think Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission, given this grant opportunity, thought we'd have a strong application for an inclusive playground given the fact we do need to replace or update equipment at Lakeside Memorial Park. Um, <clears throat> right now, because there's such a broad range of inclusivity in playgrounds, the cost can really range from anywhere of like $100,000 to $250,000 or more. Again, it just depends on the level of inclusivity. Um, number of ramps, adding ramps can be really expensive. So if you have a full inclusive playground, $250,000 is kind of your minimum. I've seen some in the metro area, upwards of $400,000, $500,000 for very large, extensive, inclusive playgrounds. Um, again, the grant would cover half of the costs. And um, if awarded the pro grant, the project would be funded through our park dedication fund. Um, going into prior to preparing this memo, I noted here that the city had tentative agreements to help cover $30,000 or more of our city's <coughs> match. I did also find out yesterday that there is a private donor who is also interested in a barrier-free playground and willing to donate upwards of twenty dollars to $30,000 additional. Um, they fund one barrier-free playground within the metro area, area annually, and um, Forest Lake would be one they would consider for this project. So that's in addition to what you see here. 
Um, this memo is a little outdated with being the fact that I did present at the city council workshop last night to get some feedback and direction. You probably saw in the packet, I did include some examples of renderings and viable projects for consideration. So we'll go to that really quick here. So last night I did present to the city council again, just to get some feedback. To apply for the grant, we would need city council approval because a resolution would be required, which city council would have to approve. So needed some feedback. Primarily talked a lot about the barrier free playground that you see here. Um, this is one that is a fully inclusive playground in the existing container space at Lakeside Memorial Park. And this project is about $250,000. That does not include removing the existing structure, which we talked about being a volunteer project and community build, so there wouldn't be a cost for that necessarily anyhow. Um, this features, uh, I'll kind of guide through this, but all of the ramps are double wide, like eight feet by eight feet. And all the ramps are wide that more than one wheelchair could pass or children could walk or run past if there was a wheelchair. A quick synopsis of this is there's different levels of platforms. So someone in a wheelchair could get to the very top of the playground, which is a six foot platform. It goes from one feet high to two feet high, three feet high, four feet high, five feet high, and then there's a six foot high platform. Every single thing within the playground is accessible. I can't speak to the level of detail that this really encompasses, but there are transfer points throughout the playground. There's tunnels that provide more of a quiet space for those, for individuals with disabilities that may have a more of a sensory need or um, want to feel more comforted that way. There's climbing features throughout the structure. There's rope climb here. There's this balance climb. Um, completely accessible again. To talk a little bit about the safety, all of the um, entries are, I can't remember the dimensions, but they're built and engineered so that obviously a wheelchair would not roll off of there, but it also, it allows space for one child or individual to climb up at a time throughout all of the safe, all of the access points. So here's just another view of it. So you can kind of see the climbing features here, um, slides throughout, a lot of fun things to do, and then really, really big shade awnings over the top. So that's just um, a quick synopsis of the barrier-free, 100% inclusive playground, which would be more in your $250,000 price, which includes the surfacing and everything. Um, here's another example of a playground with inclusive components. So you can do a standard playground, You'll see no ramps are included in this example, so really that's not accessible for wheelchairs. However, this does include some ground level features that here's an omni spin we've talked about where there's a transfer point. And there's um, another example of the sway fun where someone who is wheelchair bound could access that. Here's a hand cycle that some you know able-bodied and in wheelchair could do a hand cycle. Um, so there are some accessory items that are or can be accessible at the playground in conjunction with a playground structure. This was one other rendering. This was actually from about a year ago and we first kind of threw out the idea. But this one is a has a few ramps, so some of the components on the playground are accessible, but then the main structure would not be fully accessible. So like as you can see from the, the renderings, there's some great opportunity. Um, for an inclusive piece at the park. So next steps would be, again, we would need city council approval. They do have a meeting next Monday and the grant is due March 30th. So we are up on some time constraints that um, could pose some challenges. And from the workshop with the city council last night, there was some feedback and um, with that, um, some feedback regarding the location that maybe the idea is great, but the location isn't the best idea at Lakeside Memorial Park because it's already a pretty busy park and this might draw as a destination piece more people to the area. And there could be some negative, um, I don't know the right term, but that just might not be good to continue to have additional people to an already really popular busy park. 
Um, there was also some concern, and we've discussed quite a bit on the frost issue with the proximity to the lake. So the city council had some feedback on that of investing that amount of money into an inclusive playground there, and how do we have a guarantee or warranty that the it's not going to do the frost and the, the concrete won't shift again and we're in a situation where like we are now. So there were some questions regarding that or some concern. Um, and I think there was one other comment on, Terry, can you help me on that? What was the other The piece? other comment was on the age group. The, oh, the age group, thank you. So we, the age group was, um, you know, it was the feedback was that the playground proposed, I think particularly all of them, but um, the barrier free that there, it didn't seem like there was a lot of activity or engagement for kind of like your teenage population or the 12 to 14, I can't remember what age was referenced, but just it didn't seem as if it was servicing those age groups. So with that, there, that was some of the feedback received from city council last night. So a couple options, um, you know, we really need to determine do we, forego the grant opportunity at this time and scale back to a more a design that we're comfortable with that might meet the needs of everybody with something that I have up on your screen where we add a sway fun, a piece of inclusive play so that if there are people at the park visiting or attending a community event that are wheelchair bound that they can utilize and be a part of the play experience in some capacity. Um, or, you know, I think, which I think is kind of the feedback that we got and consider an inclusive playground for a different location. I know Belts Park was referenced as an opportunity and Fenway Park was a consideration where there's a larger footprint available. So that was some feedback from last night. <coughs> So with that, I think I covered feedback from last night. Our task this evening is to make um, a decision on how to move forward if we consider an inclusive playground elsewhere. I know there are some people might think Lakeside is a great spot for it because it's the hub of the community and it's good to have other things nearby that people can access, whether it's getting ice cream or going to a local restaurant if you're there with your family. Um, currently, we do ha offer handicap parking at Lakeside Memorial Park and all of the park sidewalks are ADA compliant, so I think that that's already <laughs> set in place. Um, but also, as we're talking about Belts Park redevelopment, is there an opportunity there? Um, there's a new park, Shaper Park, in Golden Valley that opened, I think, last year, and they did an inclusive playground with the challenge course through Minnesota Wisconsin Playground. And that was, they, they went, they did it the right way, so they kind of went with the higher costs on everything. There's timers under the surface so that you hit the start button and you do the course and it times you and you see the timer. So getting that in, that technology installed was fairly expensive. Just to give you an example, that was $450,000 to do that. It's a smaller, fully inclusive playground with the challenge course. <clears throat> so with that, I think you know our task is do we... Um, forego the grant this year and look at a different opportunity and just revisit this with some renderings maybe at a workshop that we might consider some new direction based on feedback. Um, so I guess with that, if you have any questions, otherwise I'll turn it over to you for input and direction comments on how you may want to move forward. I have a question. What about community support on this? Were there some community you know, groups that were interested in supporting this initiative? We do have locally community support um, on the project, <clears throat> regardless, I think, of which direction we go. However, the additional private funding opportunity of twenty to $30,000 is specific to a barrier-free, fully inclusive playground. I failed to mention there is one other grant opportunity up to $15,000 for an inclusive playground with a letter of intent due for that April 11th. So I just found that as well. So 
Potentially, if we didn't go, I mean, obviously the grant, we aren't going to have a strong application if we apply for just a sway fund added. You know, I mean, I don't, that's not a high level of accessibility that I don't know that we would have a strong application for consideration at that point. So that funding would potentially be off the table if we don't apply for the grant, which could cover up to half of the projects if awarded. So a lot of this is contingent on the grant. 250 k 250 thousand dollars for this deluxe playground with one. total inclusive components and if we pursue the grant and they match 125 thousand and another 25 from that private party I don't know what, what would the community group potentially throw in 50? 75 thousand 75 thousand that leaves About. the city to throw in 25 thousand. I mean, I, this is all potent, potential and hypothetical, but it's, but it's a win-win. It's a it's an um, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. So, I would like to propose that we pursue this super deluxe playground with all-inclusive components at two hundred fifty thousand and, and go for it. And what's the worst that could happen? The we grants turn down, grant. and then yeah. we come back and revisit it. Right. And I believe, and I can would have to verify, but I'm fairly positive that if even awarded the grant funding, that still needs to be formally accepted. So even if you are selected, I believe you still have, it's not a done deal until you are informed you get the grant funding and it's approved one more time. Sure. So then we, would have, sure. the, we would have the opportunity to pursue the grant and the council would still have the opportunity to weigh in after we determine whether or not we receive the grant to say yay or nay? I believe they would. I know there is, so next Monday, there, to apply for the grant, there is a resolution. I can pull it up in just a second here to show you what that looks like. Um, there's a resolution that city council would have to approve to basically say we have funds available and we're, you know if we get this, we would have funds available. So I would just want to verify that if we're awarded the grant and notified of that if there's one more final approval stage in there because what if we ask for 125 and we get 75 you know that's a difference in what we might have been planning on for funding so i think that would just be one key component to check on with the grant application do we have any idea in the school system <clears throat> how many children there are that are in wheelchairs i don't have that number and I know that it's probably a smaller percentage of the population but if you're not taking away from from what I've received is you're not <clears throat> making sure we're not taking away from activity I think what's what we have at Lakeside Memorial Park right now and I can pull up a picture to kind of remind people there's very limit very few play features on what we currently have mm -hmm. It's, it's pretty basic. There's a couple pull-up bars and a monkey bar and a slide. So I think the fact that this just offers the opportunity, I think what I've learned, this might not this might turn into more of a destination location. I, I did some research and I didn't find an inclusive playground within at least over 30 miles from here. So that was the closest that I could find. I know um, there's like a Madison's place. It's a big $400,000, $500,000 inclusive playground in Woodbury, fairly new. Um, people are going there for that. So the fact that it just offers the opportunity, and it's not only, you know, I think most people often think of children, but what if you're a parent of a, in a wheelchair and aren't able to play with your child at the playground? There's the reverse as well. So the parent can actually experience the play opportunity with their child who may be able-bodied. So I think it's just offering the opportunity is what the, I know the Parks Commission was interested in given the funding potential and leveraging city dollars with the opportunity. Does the go. grant have, to, excuse me, does the grant have to have a location for it? We would very specifically be applying for a location and project. So if we apply for the grant for let's say this barrier free design, which was, I met with them, we've talked about um, the limitations with our existing container space. There's not a lot of option and variety that we can do at this park for 
a barrier free playground. Some of them you'll see is spanned out across a pretty big footing and surface area. So this was designed specific for what we have available for space to make sure it's compliant and meets the safe safety requirements, use zones, et cetera. So it would be, if we apply for the grant from on Mar that's due, we would be applying specifically for a park and location. So if this design is unique to the space at Lakeside Memorial Park, we could do something different somewhere else where it could potentially have <clears throat> ramps that are spread out a little bit more or larger in nature. But the bigger you go with that, the more ramps you add and the more cost you're gonna have too. So I think part of it's a budget discussion. But this one what came in at $258,000, including the surfacing. And the other thing I'm thinking here is if this was um, that lake side, there's, it's, it's all flat. Um, so they could actually go from, go from the playground over to a, a restaurant for lunch or dinner, or it would be, it'd be accessible for, for everybody. Weren't we planning on doing something to this park anyway, because it's kind of been shifted out of place? And we were, and I think that's what started this whole conversation of what do we do to replace it. And then knowing the grant opportunity as we discovered, well, it could be a way to leverage city dollars if we did something inclusive, and that just developed into let's pursue it. And then I pursued it to get some different options within our estimated budget or what we'd be comfortable with and existing space at Lakeside Memorial Park. So that was um, a driving factor in considering that location because of the existing conditions. Jackie, were you? Jackie, yeah, you well, I, I have a question and, and I'm looking at the, uh, the all-inclusive, the barrier-free, I think the first one, the, the $258,000 one. And I'm all for this. I, I think it's ex specifically the direction Forest Lake needs to go. They put hundreds of thousands of dollars into that park when they redid it. And for, for them not to have included it then, which I know was not, well, it wasn't that many years ago. Do you remember that? When they redid the park on the lake? Years. 13 years ago. So, I mean, I think uh, the Forest Lake is long past due for this, but I'm looking at this one and I'm looking at the ramps and I'm following the ramps. And what I see is the accessibility for this is mostly ramps. There's nothing, unless I'm missing it and you can point it out to me, I don't see anything else for them to do on that one besides get to the destination. <clears throat> That's a good question. Um, Harlan with Minnesota Wisconsin Playground went through a pretty extensive, I'll pull something up in a minute to show you some of the other features. So there are throughout the different platforms a lot of sensory items, there's drums, there's panels, there's um, other transfer points and interactive pieces. Mm -hmm. And I have a full list, but pretty much at every platform, there's something that is accessible. So they're not just getting to the next platform and doing nothing. But they want to slide. They want so, to spin. <laughs> so they do have some of the slides, and what I could, I, some of the slides do have transfer points. They do have, Okay. the whole thing is 100% inclusive, so without going to the specific detail on each feature, mm -hmm. they anybody should be able to use anything on the playground. So there are transfer points that somebody who is able to, isn't wheelchair bound, could use the slide. It's de designed specifically for that purpose. So well, everything I, on here could be Right, and I, and I think we have to keep in mind that it's not only for the wheelchair bound, it's right. for anyone who has mm -hmm. any kind of a disability. Yeah. Right. So, you know, but that one particularly, I guess I just don't see the advantage for the wheelchair bound on that one. It looks like there's maybe a little bit more on the second one, and I'm, and I like the all-inclusive idea, and I think they're great plans, but I see more activity for wheelchair-bound on the last two examples, and especially the last one where there's actually a ramp up to, you know, there's also a ramp included. Is there one more I missed? That one. Aren't, aren't the first two the same one with yes. different yeah. views? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. From yes. a different direction? Yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> see, I didn't even know that. So it's just different views up. of it. A top, 
the first view is um, so see like this this wheelchair person right here he can beat on these drums but what else can he do i think there's a transfer point to go down so the there's slide. a small slide right there so that connects to a double i think that he doesn't go slide. down on the chair no so now he has it to be more exciting than that. it could be I just like, I guess I just think that the, the twirly things, the, the spinning things, I just think all kids love. And I, and I don't see one of those involved in, in that first example. So that be said, I may be for that, but I think we need, if there's room, we need to add. We need a twirly spinny. I do. I need one. <laughs> so here, I just pulled up on my screen. This one was done. Um, by I believe <coughs> landscape structures, which are is some of the designs that we have. The barrier free one was proposed by um, Minnesota Wisconsin Playground. Uh -huh. But here is the sway fun. Here's the ramps that lead to like a double slide, which is comparable to the other barrier free. But you can kind of see through here. There's a couple access points that mm -hmm. they're able to go this way. Um, and this one's see, probably the four hundred fifty thousand dollar one, I suppose, huh? Uh, yes. Well, so you can see they have some panels that would be provide whether it's accessory functions or activities. Um, so I mean, there's at all those platforms and levels. I think there's there's something incorporated to participate in or engage in. Obviously, you know, wheelchair bound, you have limitations that right. you're not able to do physically everything, um, but you're able to access every point on the playground, and there are play features that you're able to enjoy among your family or friends, peers, et cetera. I think that's the main mm. focus of an inclusive playground, that you're able to get up to that six-foot platform level with your sibling next to you, you know, and whatnot. So I think that's the key component. The, there are restrictions in what will be able to be done, but at every platform there's at least something that is accessible okay. and some slides to that extent so I think the word accessible we all probably have a different mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. they're very much a different is. dream for that word I mm -hmm. guess they're is very a much a way to put it what is the uh, the age <clears throat> levels for these so that's another great question um, this specific design that's the barrier free one for example it has to be classified as ages 5 to 12 however in speaking with the manufacturer there's clearly things that are more suitable plenty of things suitable for the ages 2 to 5 which i know is an underrepresented age group as well mm -hmm. there's some smaller slides at the like 2 foot level that um, but from a i'm assuming liability standpoint that is classified as a 5 to 12 playground okay so Jamie, would it be possible for us to to pursue, I hate to see us walk away from a grant opportunity, but right. would it be possible for us to pursue this option and then at the same time pursue a scaled back option so we've got them both working at once and we can then you know, determine what happens when and if we get the grant and the city council would have the opportunity at that point to, to give it another yay or nay? Yeah, I think um, a couple of thoughts on that. Um, obviously, this would have to go back to city council next Monday at their regular meeting to approve the grant application, essentially. I'm going to pull up here in just a second that resolution that they was would Was it need. a nay at the council meeting? It was a workshop, workshop yesterday, but just a lot of the feedback was more... Um, the feedback direction was more that it's a great idea, but not the best location for it, and that there's other... <clears throat> potential other opportunities that would be better suited for Lakeside Memorial Park and consider um, maybe a Fenway or Belts Park for an inclusive playground. That was the general feedback that was received last night. So from the majority? From some members. Um, it was no vote or anything, but oh. there was concern on the surfacing piece of shifting of the... But haven't we been assured that that's not going to happen? I feel pretty comfortable from the many conversations I've had. The one tricky part with that is, and I have the warranty here, um, just installation is only warrantied for a year or there's, it's one of those voids of like, not in warranty based on installation. So it's hard to get a firm 
I feel pretty confident in it with what they've described as the difference between how it was installed, which was a direct bury, not deep enough, not onto a right. concrete slab, whereas we're going <laughs> to dig below this frost level, add rebar, concrete slab, surface mount it. I mean, that just sounds more reassuring to me. Do they have examples of similar locations that they've been successful at? Both the man companies so um, have done projects near bodies of water and that do experience freezing, and I don't think they've had any issues with the level of integrity we're talking about with rebar and concrete. But personally, that's something that I can only speak so much of, and I can't 100% right. warranty it or guarantee right. that it could shift, but I can only do as much research and mm -hmm. trusting in the people that are experts in that, because I'm, I'm not. So I think that was a concern in just the overall location. Mm -hmm. So maybe to look somewhere else for it, for that opportunity. Um, so I think just a few things. I, I think when we think about frost and heave, it's Minnesota. And there's potential for that to happen anywhere. I, Depending you, you on know, installation, exactly. Right, and so while I think we feel pretty confident, I don't think anybody in their right mind would 100% say there's absolutely no, no right. heaving. Not, none of us would say that about our own house if we were selling Correct. our home tomorrow. We wouldn't guarantee the new homeowner that there's not going to be any frost heaving with the driveway or anything else. Right. I think in relation to the downtown um, and the increase in traffic there potentially, to me, the, the downtown area is touted as that is the center of the community and that's where we hold a lot of our activities. I know I did some preliminary checking just to try to get a feel from community members. I didn't get a lot because I started it late in the process, mm -hmm. but I did ask for some feedback and, and one of the pieces of feedback was in relation to Lakeside Memorial in that that's because where the community activities are and make sure that we make people feel welcome and included and integrated. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a, a piece of feedback there. I do think a side benefit potentially to this is that, you know, there are a lot of businesses around that area. And if this park has more activity, that benefits those businesses as Absolutely. well, which in the long term benefits all of us mm -hmm. as as taxpayers here. So I do think that that's something that needs to be thought about as I think about the presentation we saw tonight. You know, clearly there's some opportunities with belts in relation to um, expanding the demographic that that we cater to in reference to the parks. Um, I am concerned about about Fenway and adding something like this in the area of a Fenway. I think that is a park that is that's a sports park. Exactly, yeah. exactly, and and there are some access issues there. You know, belts may be a great project for something down the road, but it's going to take some significant undertaking to do something with that park, as we've talked about today. So I would like to see us maybe as a, a compromise or middle ground. I watched the meeting online last night so I could at least see the, the feedback and where that was coming from. I'd like to see us maybe potentially see if we couldn't make a compromise here and pursue the grant and pursue another um, scaled back proposal at the same time, see what happens with the grant um, and go from there. But. I, I do think this is an opportunity to make everybody feel like a member of the community where we hold the, the majority of our community events and where we've talked about it being a premier park and a destination park. So that's my two cents, so I'll stop. There, um, but. So when you, when you apply for the grant, you have to pull out, apply for a specific, a specific structure, I take it? Like yeah. we have to choose a structure and you have to choose a park. Correct. So you really can't be scaling back from what I... Um, no, but I think a good possibility is from the feedback from this city council workshop last night, I'm sure that within a day or two I can get, you know, are there any simple modifications on like a, a feature or, you know, bring some of those feedbacks and just see if we got one more updated rendering that keeps the overall 
structure there, but maybe it's just looking at, okay, instead of some of the, you know, can we, is there anything that would be recommended that would just give a little bit more for that 12, 13 age population that was addressed or how do we take the feedback from city council and make some minor adjustments to the rendering and so proposal. We'll go back to the supplier Company. and if, say, these are the issues that we have of we're missing this age group and, and Jackie wants a twirly thing. I, I think, you know, when you think about the, so the age group that was mentioned last night in the meeting, I believe was age 10 to 13. This is covering all but a year of that age group. Mm -hmm. So it would be interesting to know from the members of the city council that felt it needed to reach up to age 13, what would they have for recommendations to reach a 13 year old that they would want incorporated in this park? But I think scaling it back where I was talking about it is from the standpoint of, hey, if we don't get the grant, could we be working on a plan B at the same time? Oh, plan time B, that we can afford without a grant. And scaling back, and so that even if we do get the grant, when when the grant comes, I think it's a June time frame, isn't it, Jamie? Right. Um, yep, notifications are in June if you're awarded the grant funding. So by then, I feel like we would have, we would know in June if we had the grant opportunity. We'd have the local commitment confirmed as that's actively being pursued right now. The um, private donor is a very strong force lakes penciled in for that opportunity. So firm that up and then potentially another grant opportunity up to $15,000. Like I said, the letter of intent is due April 11th for that. And it's specific for inclusive playground. So I think the question was in direction from Parks, Trails and Lakes Commission, you know, what I'm hearing is like the go all in or, you know, I know Jackie had mentioned a couple, one of the other playground with inclusive components, but then at that point, do we have a strong application at that point for a grant opportunity? Right. I, you know? And I agree with you on that, that we need to go in with the strongest proposal that we have. So I propose that you um, try to find out if we can add what can we change around in this to add that component that city council thinks we're missing? But I think we go in with everything we've got and we go for the best. Mm -hmm. And because I think we'll, get, you know, I just would have my fingers crossed that that would be great. You have you have so much, we have so much opportunity here because we have so many people interested in being a part of it. And so, I mean, I just think that that's why the commission sits here, not just to spend, 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 but to spend wisely. And I think we're spending very wisely and getting all kinds of community support and grants. So I think we just go forward, try to fulfill that one little niche, stick to Lakeside Park, because I think as a commission, from what I've heard, we all agree that that's the place for this to be for the best use and the best for our community. So that was my recommendation. And, and with that, I know you have one comment, and I do as well. You can go ahead, Doug. Is that, let me be clear, is that the same footprint? This yes. new would be the same footprint as the other one, so there's no expansion or there would not be the rest of the park. what you see here would fit within the existing space and I'll pull up one more thing just to kind of give you the the um, engineering view of it from a, the how it all lays out and everything um, it's a very busy good in a good way active playground um, within the existing container space um, I know that because of the constraints on the existing container space the overall there really couldn't be any other big overall from that proposal of the barrier free playground there's really no other way to construct the inclusivity that that has so that tiered approach with the ramps mm -hmm. that would be the core fun function of the playground mm -hmm. the things that would be changing would just potentially be some accessory pieces off on the side or accessory items you know that would but the structure i just want you guys to be clear like that what that would change that that would be a complete overhaul and there's really not a lot of opportunity to do anything different in that space okay with the ramps if that makes sense mm -hmm. so the tiered approach you'd have the one ramp access and as i described before it would go up to the you know the one foot level two foot so on up to six foot height one other question is on on the, on the footprint that is existing, we have the existing cement around it, 
and there is a couple access points already for uh, a wheelchair or anything to go through. Would they be able to save that part, the, 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 the actual footprint, the, the, the cement around it, and then dig inside that? That's a, probably a technical question that I don't know the answer to. But I, I don't think there'd be much of an additional cost for you know more access points cut in and whatnot. Okay. Um, let me just see one more thing here. Do you guys have any other comments? I'm going to pull up something quick that might be a fun okay. piece that we could add that might be more for that age group. So if you guys just give me one minute, I'll be, have that up in a I second. I see this here. as a real golden opportunity to make yep. a statement for too. the community to be inclusive. And the commission would be foolish not to endorse it and go for the golden opportunity. It's, I mean, it's a no-brainer. It's no. really a no-brainer. No. It really and, is. And I, it, I, I don't know uh, who the, I, I don't understand the negative reaction to this fortuitous destination. I, I just don't understand it. I, I agree with, uh, with Terry, our commissioner, that this is, it's not applicable to Fenway Park. And if no. we've got the PAC proposing a long-range plan to reconstruct belts, which it's due for, why would we invest this kind of money only to tear that down in the future? And we already have a plan in place that we have to do something with our Lakeside Park. Yeah. No, I think it's, I think it's a great idea. There's there, the, the funding, that if, if, if we're awarded that, <coughs> Through and throughout the community, the community support and the private donations. I mean, this it's it's really really cool. How can you argue against it? Really cool. Do we need I don't know. I'm gonna have to watch that meeting. <laughs> Let me. Um, I'll pull up something here just to show you. I don't have the answers right now. If this is. Um, <clears throat> This probably wouldn't fit in the exist existing space, that container, but I know there was also some conversation about like a phased approach. And Terry, I know you watched the meeting, so maybe you can recall that. But is there a way that we focus on this now and add a piece or something that might be more specific to the 12 and 13 year olds, maybe over by the swing set, or I don't know where, I don't have that answer yet, but I think there are some options. Um, I'm just gonna say that about over by the swing set too, so there's you can kind of go back and forth too. Let me pull this. This is just an example I'll show you what guys. What do 12 really to 14 there. year olds want? What do they plan? Skateboard so this is a- um, They want a skateboard park. <laughs> this is called the Giant oh. Swing. This was at the National Rec and Park Association convention. <clears throat> I've tried something very similar to this and it was a lot of fun. And I think this is like, they just had huge attendance at their booth. <laughs> and it's kind of works similar to um, it works similar to like a teeter-totter in a sense, but your weight is just kind of pulling each other back and forth. So, mm -hmm. um, so that might be just, you know, maybe we just need to think of ways that we understand that need and that it's, I don't know what this one is, it's a skater, so I can, but I just wanted to show you that piece at least to show you um, maybe there's, that's how we accomplish that goal of tailoring towards that age group. And does it have to be immediate? Maybe we see if we get the grant funding. I don't know. And, and so, is there other? Is there another spot at Lakeside to do? Um, not that it would be inclusive, but you know, to do something like that that's geared more towards the older, older kids, so that it's, I mean, it's even away from, you know, the younger kids. I mean, that's not a bad thing all the way. You know, it's not a good thing always, but. It doesn't have to be necessarily right there with this one. It can be put in somewhere else. Yeah, I think that there would be. There's, I think there would be some opportunity there, but I think this is just kind of to show you where we're at right now. <clears throat> you know, this doesn't have much for. No, it doesn't. The older, I mean, obviously this is this, you can't see the container line, but it's like right about here. Mm -hmm. So this is what we've had there for the last 10, 12 years that doesn't offer a significant amount of play features. There used to be a teeter-totter and that broke, but other than that, this is the current um, condition. So I found it helpful to, to revert back to this just to kind of see what, you know, where we're at right now. 
as a reminder, but I think there would be additional space at the park. Um, it's kind of hard to see in these pictures, but there is over to the side that some picnic areas with some pretty decent green space. And I know we had talked about maybe adding a new container off to the side for like a two to five year old piece. But if the new equipment can provide for two to five year olds, then we would potentially have some green space where we can add a smaller container. I know the zip line keeps getting brought up as well. Have you seen, I know we talked about the zip line. That would be a piece and that would maybe be something that actually with just thinking out loud, maybe there's a spot parallel to the lake kind of over a ways that we can create a container space for a zip line, if that's of interest. I mean, I think there's opportunity to add components to the park that would be fun. The zip line is, is really fun, but it requires a lot of space. Maybe with the, um, with, with, the, with the high school students that were here, they were talking about the skate park, skateboard park or the, um, the challenge course. Maybe it could be incorporated on that. Maybe that's an idea for them. Mm -hmm. Should we be diluting this discussion with wishes and dreams for additional components when we've got a pretty clear-cut package here and we have a time constraint? We've got a meeting to prepare for on Monday. Right. And if, you know, the, to make you hustle around and get all these other components that will add question. I mean, it's pretty clear-cut. Do you need do you need approval of city council to apply for the grant? I believe I would need the resol the resolution. Let me pull that up. Yes, I would need. Oh. So here's the resolution. <coughs> Sorry for going back and forth. Okay, and that's why I'm wondering if if there's a possibility in in whatever we decide tonight to say something along the lines of you know applying for this grant and shooting for the moon and at the same time working on a scaled back version so that when June comes, when the grant, we know whether or not we got the grant. We've got two proposals We're ready in to front do of something. us. We're ready to Something's do something. Yeah. And yeah. we can take it back to the city council and say, you know, we've got the grant, we can do this, or we can say no to the grant and we can do that, but at least then, you know, there's, there's some options and, and maybe that would help city council feel a little bit more comfortable about pursuing the grant opportunity and um, if it doesn't come through, we're ready with plan B. Yep. I think the challenge is, and I know it's always important to have all of the costs, but with these potential donors still lingering on what their contribution would be, that's just a variable right now. So I think in that by June, I'm very comfortable with having a complete summary of, okay, here's the total project, which we have that cost. Here's how much we were awarded, if awarded. Here's how much, here's how much, and here's how much potentially. And then I think when you see the potential investment from city dollars, I think it helps, that might help a little bit because it helps us leverage our dollars and keep money in our park dedication fund that can be then saved for other projects like parks redevelopment coming up as well. So does this, if, if we put this in, we still have swings, right? Mm -hmm. We still have that mm -hmm. strip of swings. Because yeah. yep. that's the one thing I don't see that kids just, I mean, I think kids love swings. So. And this will be the only I just say we go for it. I like your idea. 30 miles. I From think the excellent. research I've conducted, I know there's Woodbury, Cottage Grove, Edina, Eden Prairie. A better place than in the center of the city. See, I, yeah, yeah, there is no I better good, place. It's a magnet. And keep in mind, one of the pieces of feedback that I got was, remember, kids grow up, but they still, they're, they're larger, but they still want to be part of a playground yes. for whatever reasons. And, and this allows for growth of a child. It allows for adults with children, adults with a disability to be there with children. Yeah. Huh. You know, potentially you're right across the street from a new, you've got Cherrywood Point right across the street. And maybe they want to sit on a sway or I don't exactly. know, do something here. You've got just some come out and watch. There. Be yeah. able to get up there, but get yeah. close enough to watch a grandchild. Know. Or something. And one key thing for me, and I'm pretty confident with any grant opportunity, even if you're awarded, I think you have to formally accept it. So you still have the opportunity to deny the funds at that time. I just would want to verify that, and it'd be contingent on having that opportunity to deny the funding if you received it for whatever Absolutely. reason. Does that make sense to you? Of, yes. 
it's an out at June if we are awarded and have the opportunity right, you know, available. I just want to make sure that at that point, that's when we're finally approving it by just accepting the funding. The application process, everyone has to be aware of what the where it's going, what the estimated costs are, what the features are, and what we propose is what we would have to do if we get it and then it is approved one more time. Does that make sense? I just want to make sure everyone's yep. understanding of that, I guess. I think one thing that is new today that wasn't here yesterday either was the presentation we had tonight and the motion for a committee of park commission members and kids in this age demographic that we've been talking about as well to work together on a on some strategy for for belts as well and that was wasn't that wasn't here last night does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So maybe that, along with this, would maybe help? I don't know. I don't know. Bring comfort to those who are mean, concerned yeah. about <clears throat> the teen. Yeah, the belts teens. presentation wasn't at the workshop last night. Right. So they and don't we, realize that, you know, we may have something else in the works, at least in the preliminary stages anyway, a plan, kind of a plan for that area. So this one can't go there, too. Well, or that we've got kids that are in maybe the age demographic that, that we they're might talking be missing. about that are going to go to belts. Yep, and that we've got kids that are going to be involved with a a, a sub team that's going to meet and talk about. Yeah, that's great. Information. I don't know. Maybe that would make a difference. I think as that's well. great information to share with them on, on Monday night. Okay. Absolutely. Can Good point. Emotions? Here's the um, just one more piece just to show you because I know this was one of the questions <clears throat> last night. Um, again, about the can we have more language in the agree an agreement or a warranty or something to confirm that it's not going to shift again. But like I said, anybody I think that's going to do the installation is only going to warranty it for a year. And then it says down here I highlighted um, exclude damage caused by vandalism, negligence, improper installation. However, one other comment was I think if depends on I think Minnesota. Wisconsin um, game time, they only use certified, I can double check my notes here on that. Um, they only use certified installers. So if you use a certified GT installer, there's, um, you know, you're sitting pretty comfortably with a proper installation <coughs> at that point. I mean, that's, that's as far as I can go on the level of warranty and confirmation on, is it going to shift again? If a certified installer and an engineer who's knowledgeable with the subsurface grades and how the depth and the concrete and all of that, I mean, that's the level of confirmation I would have on that. So it won't be 100% under warranty, which is, I know, a question that's come up quite a bit. But nothing is. No, nothing. Nothing is. Nothing is. So I think we know the, the risks of what any equ new equipment there would be. And after 12 years... This is what the equipment looks like right now. No. But I think from the research I've done, I truly feel that it might not have, I don't feel it was installed properly by just a direct berry. And I don't think to the depths that it was supposed to be done. So I think that I feel more confident when people are telling me about what the new method of installation would be. It's different from what was done before. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do you need a motion on this tonight or just our... I would probably take a motion if you guys do <laughs> want to see if council will... I mean, this is pending city council approval on Monday if we are able to submit the grant application. I'll make... Are we done discussing? I'll make a motion that um, this that we instruct Jamie to go forward with the grant application for the Lakeside Memorial Park all-inclusive... Um, equipment with and include all of the comments that have made this evening to City Council on Monday night to encourage their approval. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Can we make a friendly amendment? You may. Um, could we say something about running a parallel um, well, I think that's in the information. Okay. Because I think that's separate from the grant. Okay. It's our plan. Okay. That if they aren't going to let us go forward, 
we will still be coming forward with something. But to me, that's in the other information. Okay. So yeah, well, that should be included in there. Okay. Okay. I have a question as well. I know from our, and I think this might be included mm -hmm. in the information, but just for point of clarification, because you might not see the next, if we, if we make any minor updates, the whole, you know, the ramp structure is not going to change, but if there's any feature updates that I can accomplish in the next couple of days with the manufacturer, send it to you in an email and you're comfortable with me moving forward with my thoughts and manufacturer's thoughts on any minor updates to the structure as long as the overall integrity and design is not changed to uh, see if we can improve features for that I feel like that was included in my motion okay, when just, I asked you to go forward with the, okay. with the conversation that's gone on. I guess my point is, is you're comfortable not seeing another version and that you like what you see, I and think if it's I very realize, similar to that, I you trust. I when making my motion, we don't have another meeting before you have to go to city council. So and I what? trust you with it. Okay. One point of discussion. Mm -hmm. So the city council doesn't think that's a good place for this. Is there intent then to suggest to us that they, we remove what's there? Because that's something has to be done with that, correct? Correct. So, if not this, what? I think if not this opportunity with the funding, I think we would be tasked with our plan B more um, sooner of what new playground structure would be within us. It would be a, a smaller budget price point, but we wouldn't be applying for the grant and have some of the funding sources that we could potentially have to accomplish the bigger barrier-free playground. I think it would probably go to a city council workshop or a joint workshop with Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission and city council on if there's if they want to have input on what is there, that would be our next step. I think we would start, if this doesn't pass on Monday, we would then start planning for what do we put there. And if they want to have input in that, we can certainly have a joint workshop if there's certain features or whatnot that they would like considered. Does that make sense or answer your question? Well, it does, but I can't <clears throat> imagine why they would scale back from something that's cost effective to something else that it will not. be less, a lesser. For more money. Yeah. So I think we should go forward. So any more discussion on that? So we have a motion on the floor, and uh, did we get a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Finally. Jamie, yes. if I can do anything to help on Monday or whatever, let me know too. Yeah, I will let you know if there's anything, um, any updates or feedback. Um, I should be able to work on taking the feedback from council to see if we can make some adjustments in our proposal for the grant application. And I'll let you know if I have any questions at that time. Good. All right, so next on the agenda is the power boat race event permit. <clears throat> okay, so chair and members of the Parks, Trails and Lakes Commission Provided as a separate cover tonight was just a little more detail on a park event permit. Um, for some of you on the Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission, this is going to look very similar. Um, the powerboat races have been held at Lakeside Memorial Park the past several years, and they are just seeking to have their event at Lakeside Memorial Park again this year. Just some notable items. Um, last year, to, last year was the first year they moved their event to a summer date which was the first weekend in June. They used to have their races in September. So the Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission approved that. It was more in conjunction with Lake Fest activities. There was conversation last year about, you know, is it gonna be a busier time of the year to close the dock access um, and close the beach area? Um, we didn't have any, we had, didn't receive any complaints to the city offices on not being able to use the dock or beach area during the event. I think they, 
did a good job in managing that so it was only closed as minimally as possible or as needed um, just before race races started and shortly after they finished. Um, they also, another notable change is that their event has always started on Saturday at noon. This year they're proposing a start time on Saturday at 4 o'clock p.m., which I think is a good recommendation and a positive change for the city. The only issues we ran into last year, um, per the approved permit last year, they can't access and take over the parking lot at Lakeside Memorial Park until 4.30 p.m. There was a plan approved by the Forest Lake Police Department in 2016. Um, I can pull that up for you. That has not changed. However, last year there were some other racing boats in our parking lot around the noon hour on a Friday, which caused some concern and issues and required Forest Lake Police Department and myself to get down there to indicate, you know, you can't be parking boats and park, you know, vehicle parking spots at this time. And so there were some concerns um, logistically with that. However, if they move their time to four o'clock, start time, they would have more time to set up the next day so can arrive at the park later on Friday. So I think that's a favorable change to the event. They would still be done within park hours um, before dark. They would probably race on Saturday from 4 to 8 p.m. or so, give or take. Um, last year they had some weather issues. It was right around the time we had one of our storms come through and they were in communication with me over the weekend and via text messages and um, making sure that I was aware of any delays and restarting and making sure I was comfortable with things as they were progressing due to the weather issues. So there was good communication there. Um, other than that, I think everything else on the event remains the same um, as they've proposed in the past. They also bring in, um, as noted, um, food trucks. It brings in over 700 people. And um, I think that really encompasses it. So tonight, seeking approval of their park event permit application. Um, I did put some under some following conditions, which are outlined on your staff memo. What, one question I have is with the, with the food event, with the food vendors, do we... Do they have to provide an application and pay for that, or is that all inclusive with the um, with the the whole powerboat? They would um, they would solicit and oversee and manage whatever the relationship was with that vendor. So they would coordinate directly with them. Okay. We would not charge a fee to the vendor or be involved at all. Okay. So the the, stip the following conditions, just again. They cannot use the parking lot until after 4.30 p.m. They have the same areas in the parking lot as outlined and approved by the Forest Lake Police Department, which here's, I can pull up on the screen here. This is what was approved in 2016 and has worked since then. So the highlighted areas is what they take over, meaning they have a lot of boats and trucks and they did have a pit crew and a lot of that's for safety concerns. So they will have this area shut down during the event times. Um, I think with the Saturday at four o'clock start, they only, you know, I think that they, people can still access the, the dock leading up to the event. So that gives people more of the Saturday to be utilizing the lake. They really only shut the dock down and the beach area down closer to when the boats are out and start time of the event. But this is, they take a lot of this parking over <coughs> for, their boats and trailers and whatnot and have a pit crew. So that was, to continue that, we haven't had any issues other than just the arriving too early has been an issue. And then additionally, they pay for and purchase additional restrooms for the two days of the event and that they pay the park event fees, not freeze, <laughs> park event fees as indicated in our city fee schedule, which is $150 per day. With that, if you have any questions, otherwise I'm looking for a motion to approve. The dates, I guess, is an important one. Again, is Saturday, July 14th, and Sunday, July 15th. Do you know what the businesses think of this, taking up all that parking space? The only, from what I know, 
there was originally some concerns on the Friday. And that's why in 2016, this park, it was reviewed by the police department and the 4.30 time frame on a Friday was okay. And we haven't received issues in the last two years or res complaints or anything from local businesses. Most of those are Monday through Friday, I believe. Um, one difference might be Pie Pizzeria is now open on that corner there, mm -hmm. which is, as you can see, a little further away from where they're <coughs> taking over, so there still is parking available there. Um, so since this improvement has been made and not allowing access till 430, we haven't had any complaints or issues to the city that I'm aware of. Okay. Well, I'm Before guessing that, it's I'm guessing a lot of those boaters will be in <coughs> Pie Pizzeria. I'm hoping or that they will be. <laughs> it does. So, I mean, it does draw over 700 people. Right? To, you know, it's been one of our bigger events, and it brings a lot of people from the Twin Cities metro area and people traveling from different communities even further to utilize Lakes of Memorial Park. And aside from those few items I mentioned with arriving early in the parking lot at noon on a Friday, that was of concern. And so we had them move until 4.30 last year. So hopefully that would be resolved with a later start time. Um, other than that, I think that things have gone smoothly at the event that I'm aware of. Is that elect electricity charge like? <clears throat> Just per the event, so it would be here. Electricity is twenty five dollars per day, so they would they would have one hundred fifty dollars per day for their fee, three hundred dollars total, and then an additional fifty dollars for electricity. So their their fee to the city would be three hundred fifty. But what's do we charge at? I, mean, I know we do, but I don't know what the schedule is for um, arts in the park. We do. We do. What do we charge? I believe it's um, for the full season. Well, it's a season. Twenty-five or fifty dollars. My oh, mind okay. is not quite then that sounds the... Then it sounds reasonable, for sure. Mm. Any more discussion? Anyone make <clears throat> a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the Power Boat Race event permit. Second. So we have a motion to approve the Power Boat Race event permit with a second. Any more discussion? I would, just for clarification, yep. with the following condition, the four conditions listed. <clears throat> as recommended, yeah. Or as recommended by yes. the staff. <clears throat> Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. So last on the regular agenda is the Forest Lake Baseball Association Field Rental Fee Waiver for 2018. All right, and I'll try to get through this quick here. I know we're getting close here on some, getting close to eight o'clock here. So try to wrap this up quickly. Um, provided as a separate memo this evening, um, I do have it up on the screen, but this, the Forest Lake Area Baseball Association, as you know, we've had them come forward as a great partner to the city of Forest Lake, providing quite a significant amount of financial contributions to improve the fields at Coolin Camp Park. Um, over Since 2013, it's been over $39,000 in donations. Um, They've also utilized other resources of time and money. So they do, they cover field preparation for all their games, they volunteer work. They've had other items donated like a storage shed or batting cages, um, items of that nature were provided out at Coolin Camp. And it's had a good impact on youth baseball, <coughs> giving them high quality fields to play with, um, being that sometimes there's a shortage of fields in the community. So just a brief, addition to that is um, field three last year at the end of 2017 was completed with the funding on behalf of the Forest Lake Baseball Association, a grant opportunity with the Minnesota Twins Field for Kids program, and then the city provided some funding as well. So field number three is a full 13 and under field with fencing, um, dugouts, extended sidelines. They really renovated the whole entire field. They've also done some other improvements in the outfield. There's some drainage issues, so we addressed that late in 2017 as well. Again, working with them on covering the cost for some of those improvements. 
Um, they would like to continue their partnership and have already set aside $10,000 for additional improvements for 2018 at Cool & Camp. Their next um, project they'd like to present to us would be a partnership in re renovating field number one as their next project to have that be a complete, completely renovated, improved field at Cool and Camp. So that would be two out of the four fields. Um, as listed in the city's fee schedule, athletic field rentals are $15 per day, field per day. FLBA calculated um, their usage on practices and games, and if we charged them the rate, it would be over $8,000 due to the city um, if they placed an actual reservation with the city. Um, how it's been operating is they've just had the opportunity to utilize the fields out there and have not secured a formal reservation with the city and have not been charged the fee because of that. We haven't held a reservation. I know there also has been a time where they just paid a nominal fee and had kind of a blanket permit. Um, but I just think it's important to note their contributions to the city and given their contributions that have taken place and the f investments that they're looking to make in 2018, um, just wanted a formal approval to recommend to City Council that we waive their field rental fees for the use of cooling camp for 2018. And I didn't include cooling camp in my staff recommendation, but that would make sure that would be noted for the field use at cooling camp park. I will make a motion to approve. Um, the City Council for Cooling Camp to waive the fees for the Forest Lake Baseball Association. I think they've done a great job um, having that partnership, so I would make a motion to waive that. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion questions? I have. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, we'll go ahead. Um, <coughs> do they have the exclusive use of those fields then? Nothing has been declared by Parks, Trails, and Lakes Commission or the city formally of an exclusive use. Um, some communities offer to programs like this a blanket permit where you just type up, have a permit available that they can give to some of their coaches where they have the priority use out there. If they, the Baseball Association has provided me access to their scheduling so I know when they are utilizing the four fields out there. So if there are any, if I would receive any requests regarding a potential field reservation, I would have the tools I would need to be able to quickly look and say, okay, that date's open, let me just confirm that it's not being utilized. And it's something that I feel comfortable that I could manage fairly easily to still offer <clears throat> opportunity with the community or other residents who might be interested. An example was last year, I know some a softball group was interested in a certain practice date and time, and that's kind of the process I went through. I worked with them, and they were able to be flexible in uh, making some adjustments, so they were able to accommodate needs of others. Do they use it five days a week, seven days a week? They are using it. It was a, a lot of information, um, but they are estimating... Um, in the summer for fields one and two, which is 10 and under and 11 and under kids. Um, both fields, fields one and two, for, for 24 games, um, practices, and these are estimated at two hours each. So two hours for two fields, 24 games, and then enough for practices, two hours for both fields for 60 practices. Field three, again, is two hours, just the field three. They are anticipating 16 games, and then they're anticipating 48 practices on field three. So I think a key, and then field four is the lowest quality, I would say, is kind of the reserve. They didn't provide any, that's kind of for the 14U and 15U practice field. So they didn't provide any estimates really there, which is, that's okay. Um, but I think the, the key component is they, they're being used, and they're being used a lot, and they're helping really invest in the maintenance, and the city's doing the standard maintenance at Cool and Camp as we are at, at our other city parks, 
you know, we're mowing, addressing the garbage in the restrooms, but I think they're putting a lot of volunteer time as well into making sure they're dragged, chalked, and prepped for games as well. So there's a lot of field use happening at Coolant Camp. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Jackie? Do we do any um, <clears throat> turf maintenance out there in Coolant Camp? Or is it just besides mowing? I don't think the city is, I think the city, let me just take the back. I think the city may drag the fields very periodically. No, I'm talking about the, I'm sorry, I'm talking about the grass. The grass. You know, weed control, fertilizing, do we any, do any? Just out? it would follow the city's standards for park maintenance. Um, <clears throat> so I don't have that memorized, but I think that whatever, like once or twice a year, weed control, whatever oh, okay. we do at all the parks, that's what we would do at Coolin Camp as well. Okay. My only other comment then is, do, have you have you seen um, have they been in have you been in discussion with them on what their improvements are are for this year? I have had <clears throat> yes, I have. They basically want to. We're getting there. We've had one meeting on it, mm -hmm. but essentially, in short, they want to have Field One B have the extended sidelines and improved pitcher's mound. Then I think they have the dugouts already. Fencing to the outfield and then the exterior um, fence in the outfield as well. So essentially the same what they've done to field three mm -hmm. is what they want to do with field number one. Okay. So we've talked a little bit about the funding from if they have $10,000. I believe the proposed next step is $24,000 total. So they're kind of able to cover almost half of it. Mm -hmm. And we just have, we're, we're going to meet again here soon in April to talk about what potential opportunities we have. Um, the city of Forest Lake did receive this just recently, not for an agenda item tonight, but just as a, we'll talk about this in April. We did receive $8,000 as a donation from the um, <coughs> Spring Lake Lions Club for park and recreation activities in our community. Um, they do purse bingo at the local VFW and wanted to get back to our community. Mm -hmm. So we have $8,000 that we recently received, accepted by council, that is on the table for discussion on how that is spent. And I think that's separate from the playground equipment. I think there's other opportunities so that they have their own project. But mm -hmm. that's an April discussion okay. item, just an FYI, that that's kind of the timeline on the baseball improvements. I guess um, I don't recall when they came to us last year for <coughs> approval of the project that they did, but they did do a project last year, my, if I recall. Mm -hmm. And um, a, a nice one, a very nice one. I know yeah. they put a lot of money in. And I, maybe I'm just being a little cautious because I haven't seen or heard of what their plan is for this year. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if in the motion we should make it contingent on their contribution of equal or more of what we would not be getting, what we're forgiving. Sure. No, I think that's a good valid point if you I mean, just so add that because, in you know, I mean, I just think that's, yeah, that's good, good business. Idea. So you're offering. I mean, I don't think they're going to jump, you know, run away with anything or anything. You know, I don't think just even if they didn't do it this year, they'll do it next year. I, I get that. But I just think it's a nice comfort zone for everyone. So after, Jason, are you willing to amend your motion to include that? I will amend my motion to include the what equal what Jackie said. What Jackie said. <laughs> You're saying it equal to the eight thousand or I yeah, mean, I don't. Yeah, that's an estimated number based on the I calculations. Think that, yeah, I think if we're going to forgive it, they have to put that money into sweat equity. into the field. So at least Contingent. equal to the amount forgiven. That's what I'm asking for. Because I know the, the the sweat equity when they were here last year. They were, doing, they were doing the, the uh, batting or the the fence yep. around, and they did an awesome job with the, mm -hmm. with the presentation. And the year before that, I think it was the lockbox mm -hmm. for the equipment. Oh, it was. Yeah, you're right. So, yeah. Um, so I know they will. The, the, yeah, I just it, think it, that it, we don't have that information at this point. And we just should. since we're here, I'll throw up some pictures quick as you're. Oh, it this. looks so nice. Except obviously that tubing wasn't on the top of the fence yet, but just to show you kind of the nature of the project. This was it getting put up in the outfield there. Um, so I guess that's kind of a quick summary to show you how they helped um, significantly make this happen. And this is field three. And a side note, they are, and I can email you about this, they are having a grand opening, like, or they're having their kickoff to the season, April 7th at field three. Okay. So I have, 
Hence, I got to follow up with them here in the near future. Um, Minnesota Twins Field for Kids grant, they order plaques, and so that'll go up. And I'm going to try to get something with their, you know, to recognize their them for their contribution. Oh, so great. April 7th is their kickoff, and I think it'd be great to get some good feedback and morale around that partnership there. I, I agree. So you've accepted the I'm motion. Accepted Did the we get amendment. a second on the amendment? Second. Uh, any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So we have a couple of quick park yes. updates. Really quick. <clears throat> I'll just get through these. Um, Fenway Park Management Agreement. Briefly talked about this when we were on the agenda item about the advisory board committee. Looking to do some amendments to that. I am going to get some amendments drafted. Um, this will probably likely, the goal is to have the, an amended Fenway Management Agreement at our April 17th meeting for Parks Commission review and approval, which will then go to City Council in April for approval. The amended changes are pretty basic. Who's responsible for irrigation? It's now the city. We're aerating just a few things there. Um, I did meet with President of FLA and Dave, um, Al Hauge and Dave Adams, and there were some other questions that we're looking at just in regards to some of the items in the agreement. So I'll make sure those are all noted for you guys in April. And hopefully before then, my <coughs> Jason and Jack and I can probably meet and just go through those as a subcommittee before our April 17th meeting. <coughs> Um, la the last update with that is um, the maintenance agreement between FLA and Walker Enterprises. I know that the two groups connected on Friday, and it seems like everything's on track with that. Um, city staff has reviewed the agreement, and I know Jack has reviewed it as well. Um, we aren't approving it because it's not between the city, but just to be comfortable with the terms, and it seems to be that we're feeling comfortable with that maintenance agreement. So that will be... It's tentatively set to go into effect like April 16th, which is the day we have scheduled for our walkthrough at Fenway Park, which is a key date for um, 1 o'clock is well, when city staff, members of the Fenway Advisory Board or anybody's welcome, representatives from FLA and the new maintenance provider are going to do a thorough walkthrough of the whole complex. What We're day is it? Monday, April 16th at 1 o'clock p.m. If that changes, I'll certainly let you know, but we have that scheduled. Okay. We are gonna identify existing conditions of the whole complex, take notes, and then from there determine um, where we spend our priorities and funding. So that's again, more of the advisory committee, but obviously it impacts Parks Commission as a whole, and that would come to commission if we needed to for any feedback, but likely using Jack and Jason for helping with that, along with city staff. Because we can't have a quorum. We can't so, also. <clears throat> Any ques questions or comments, concerns on that mm -hmm. item? No, oh, and then I'll just jump in really quick. Final flyer, this is coming up on Sunday. Um, <clears throat> thanks to Terry for helping solicit some of the sponsors. Just really quick, kind of same as last year, it's from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock on this Sunday, March 25th. We are potentially up against some rain or and or snow, but it, we've city staff and feedback from Parks Commission are having the event rain or shine. So people know that, they can dress appropriately, decide if they want to participate. You might be in snow boots and snow pants, but <laughs> last year we tried to make some, it became a lot of additional work to try to reschedule. It rained on the reschedule date, we moved it inside and <clears throat> we're not moving it indoors. So it's gonna be rain or shine. We have a lot of fun things planned, so we hope a lot of people still are able to make it. So that is my update on the parks, or on the Easter egg hunt for the city. With that, that's all I have for updates tonight. Anybody on the committee have any updates? I'd like to ask a question. Mm -hmm. um, I just thought of it on kind of the way here tonight. Um, I was just wondering if we have or could send Tim a thank you card for the time he spent with us? We have not, and we certainly could. Okay, wonderful. So let's connect on that. Good idea. Thank you. That's a good I idea. I just think he, he was an excellent uh, chairperson, and That's he very, very put his heart into it, and I think that would be nice for us to do. 
I agree. Thank you. That's very thoughtful, and we can certainly do that. So I'll get something coordinated and connect with you guys on that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so, speaking of Tim, I have one update. So last year, the Lions um, worked with the city to do a park cleanup day, spring park cleanup day. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do that again this year, and Tim is going to chair that for the Lions. Oh, nice. So there will be a date that will be picked, but um, we'll be looking for volunteers throughout the community. We'll send them out to some different parks. There's a checklist of things they can look for to clean, and then also a piece where they can list things that are broken or need repair so that we're aware of what's happening out there. And then the Lions will sponsor lunch for those that are volunteering back at Lakeside Memorial. So more to come on that on the date, but just wanted you to all know that okay. we're going to do that again this year. Anything Any else other? before we wrap it up? Any other commissioner updates? Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye